Hello and welcome to my Kerbal Space Program tutorial. Today's episode will be involved in uh, building some of your first rockets and getting into orbit the first time. Now my game does have uh, the Making History Grant, the Making History expansion, and the Breaking Grounds expansion. So there are some parts that I have that you will not have if you do not have these expansion packs. I will be building two rockets uh, for each uh, design and then uh, we'll be transferring ourselves over to a science mode playthrough in order to test out the designs in a science mode game, similar to what I hope you would do. Um, I recommend that each new player open up a science mode mode game in order to uh, help learn the ropes of the game and uh, to follow along with me as I show you guys how I play and uh, how I get around in Kerbal Space Program. So opening up the game we uh, head our way over to the vehicle assembly building. Starting yourselves off you're going to notice that uh, if when you open up a science mode you're only going to have access to level one uh, parts. Uh, if you don't have uh, making history you're only going to have the mercury style capsule. Uh, if you do have making history you're going to have the Vostok. I'm going to build two rockets, one with the Vostok capsule and one with the mercury style capsule. Each one is going to have a command capsule. Each one is going to have a parachute, a uh, flea uh, solid rocket motor, and uh, two mystery crew experiment modules. Uh, this will be uh, a simpler, a simple rocket that will go up, uh, collect low altitude uh, atmospheric data using the mystery goo containers, and then uh, parachute back to a landing back on Kerbin. It's not going to go very high. The highest one will go is around 10 kilometers, and uh, it will be a, a good test and a good show of uh, what you can and cannot do in Kerbal Space Program in the earlier stages. So for this flight, we're just going to cover the absolute bare minimum of flight. Uh, in order to activate each of the uh, experiments, uh, right-click on them and uh, uh, click on the Perform Experiment, which we will see when I go over to Science Mode. In order to uh, perform a crew report, uh, right-click on the Command command Module and uh, click on uh, Perform Crew Report. And then to activate the stage, simply hit uh, spacebar to fire the rocket engine. And if you have the Vostok module, you automatically have a built-in decoupler capable, capable of detaching the main spacecraft from the body of the rocket. This is a much sta safer design as it allows, it prevents the, the vehicle from doing what I call lawn darting, uh, which is just flying nose first which can cause uh, serious issues for spacecraft, especially it'll get fast enough that the parachute can't deploy. Uh, but there are ways to avoid it. Uh, the Mark II, the version 2 of the Mark I rocket uh, is capable of flying much higher than the main vehicle, than the uh, Mark I version. Uh, but it does have a tendency to lawn dart if you don't activate the parachute in time as you will see here. Upon the completion of your first couple of flights, or I recommend taking two flights with a, uh, each rocket in order to uh, maximize the amount of science that you can get out of it, uh, you're going to want to start building your second rocket using level two parts. At this point, you're going to have unlocked the swivel engine and uh, some liquid fuel uh, engines. If you're playing career mode, I'm going to try and keep this within the uh, capabilities of a career mode player by keeping each rocket within less than 30 parts in the first few uh, versions of each rocket. Once again, we'll add uh, our science experiments, this time incorporating a uh, temperature sensor, a thermometer, into the, into the vehicle. And now that we've unlocked a decoupler, we can uh, fly with the uh, mercury-style capsule uh, and have it be a lot safer than with the 
uh, wi without the, the decoupler. We're still going to fly the Vostok capsule with a, with a, without a decoupler because it still has that one built in. Uh, we'll add some uh, guiding fins in order to keep it stable in the atmosphere and take it out to the launch pad. So now that we uh, have uh, got a much uh, larger range uh, with these rockets and the ability to use a thrust vector rocket engine, it's best to start explaining the other parts of the controls for the game. Once again, we're going to hit space to activate the engine and use shift and control to control the throttle of the engine. W and S will control the pitch and we're going to try and pitch, we're going to roll and then Q and E will control roll. We're going to roll ourselves over towards the 90 degree vector and that will have us go travel in the same direction as the planet is rotating. And then we're going to hit uh, W to pitch downward uh, so that way our belly faces, the rocket's belly faces downward and push ourselves over to, so that way by the time we hit about 45 degrees we're at 10,000 meters or 10 kilometers. And as we get a little higher by the time your apoapsis uh, down in the corner, the left hand corner of the, of, the, of the screen, as soon as your apoapsis gets a little bit above the atmosphere, which this one does not, the, the atmosphere stops at 69,000 meters, you're going to be at about level with the horizon. This way you can push your velocity and uh, push your trajectory out as far along the horizon as possible. The way this way you get good practice for when you get in for when you get out of suborbital flight and into orbital flight. Coming back down we're going to get some re-entry effects but we're not going fast enough to start really having any big big heating. We'll wait until we're low enough to activate the parachutes. Anytime below 10,000 is good. I like to activate it at 5,000. Parachutes active and we land ourselves in the ocean and with that you should be able to gather scientific data from the upper atmosphere and from uh, space around Kerbin. Moving on to the uh, version 2 of the Mark II rocket, uh, this is an example of a vehicle that requires uh, more complicated controls. It does not have reaction wheels in the main uh, body of the spacecraft, so it can't actually perform uh, any role. So you have to use the yaw controls, which are A and D. Once again, trying to control our throttle to keep our spacecraft well in control, uh, we find that it, this vehicle is not quite as aerodynamically stable as we tend to hope, which isn't a good situation. Uh, certain vehicles will only work in certain conditions. I'm still going. To, I still attempt to do the gravity turn on a couple of tries, but eventually the only way to actually get it to work to achieve the same uh, flight profile as the previous rocket, I have to uh, change the flight the flight profile completely, having it fly a, uh, uh, a much steeper trajectory, basically flying straight up, which isn't ideal because it is not as fuel efficient. This is a situation that you'll often find yourself in while, while playing Kerbal Space Program, is that you'll see that certain rocket designs simply do not work, either due to aerodynamics or due to the or due to any part clipping issues or even if they get so big that we have what we call Kraken attacks where random physics engine glitches will cause the vehicle to just shake itself apart. Uh, this is more of an aerodynamic issue and it's just an issue with the design. We'll see that it continues to, pl to prove problematic as we further the design but uh, this design I would not actually use in the future.
Returning to the vehicle assembly building, we begin assembly of our next rocket, the first of many orbital rockets that we're going to be building in this series. We're going to add an ablative heat shield to the bottom of the to the bottom of the uh, mercury capsule, as well as uh, make it so that way there is only 20 ablative material attached to that instead of uh, the 120 that is usually added. We don't actually need all that much. To make my rockets look a little nicer, I like to have them but the decoupler butted directly against the uh, heat shield like that, just because the actual shroud doesn't work very well. Setting up our first stage, we're going to build a vehicle capable of sending uh, the small capsule with its scientific payload into low carbon orbit. We're going to have the second stage uh, slightly use slightly less thrust so that way uh, we can extend out our burn time as long as we need to. We're then going to use the new radial decouplers and these larger fins to uh, help guide our thing, guide our rocket as well as to uh, use these uh, slightly larger solid rocket motors to kick the rocket off of the off of the launch pad and uh, save some fuel for the for the first liquid fuel stage. This way we can kick ourselves as high as possible and get ourselves into orbit a lot quicker and Moving on, we quickly start building the uh, version 2 of the Mark III rocket. Uh, again, with this one, the biggest issue is, is the trade-off between uh, having a reaction wheel or having built-in ablative material and built-in decouplers. So it saves a little bit on weight, it costs just as much, but you lose some control, which I feel is not a good trade-off, but it is up to you if you have the... Uh, if you have the Making History expansion pack, you can uh, choose to uh, you can choose whichever capsule you wish to use. And if you can try try and find a way to make this design work eventually, uh, more power to you. For our final lesson today, moving ourselves out to the launch pad, it's time to learn about the very basics of orbital flight. Getting into space, we're going to use spacebar and Q and E to rotate towards 90 degrees using uh, our keyboard. Uh, then we're going to very carefully, in order to not flip our rocket, keep ourselves within the prograde marker, the little yellow circle on the nav ball there in the middle, and try and push ourselves uh, as far out as possible. The reason we're we're, turn, we're doing a gravity turn like this is in order to kick ourselves into orbit we need to be traveling high enough out of the atmosphere while at the same time flying flying fast enough that we miss miss the uh, horizon so what we're going to do is we're going to kick ourselves into an 85 about 85 kilometers above the surface of Kerbin and then when we reach the highest point of our orbit we're going to uh, face towards the horizon and burn until we have a periapsis or a lowest point of our orbit that is equal to our that is that is about the same as our apoapsis. You're not ever going to really get it the same. It's uh, you're going to get slightly an elliptical orbit. In fact, it's one of uh, Kepler's laws of uh, planetary motion that no sp that no object actually moves in a perfect circle. So you're never going to get it quite perfect. But uh, getting it as close as possible uh, is pretty good. But just getting the periapsis above 70 kilometers will mean you can put your vehicle into a safe orbit. And that should be your main goal with this mission. Landing back on Kerbin in a splashdown, you're going to face retrograde or the other yellow or green circle with the X in it. You're going to burn until the... You can burn 
until your vehicle uh, gets your periapsis gets below the atmosphere or below around 69,000 meters. Uh, a safe place to go is around 35 kilometers because that will allow you enough time to land. Uh, that will give you enough air pressure that will push your rocket into uh, a suborbital trajectory. Or you can simply have it so that way it impacts, you'll be hitting the atmosphere a lot faster and it will use a lot more ablator, but you're definitely going to be uh, landing on Kerbin at that point. On this test flight of this rocket, uh, we slowly begin to realize the aerodynamic stabilities of this vehicle uh, are going to make it basically impossible for us to fly it. Uh, it will never work. I've already seen that in in the basic designs. As we get up to about, we're already uh, uh, edging towards 45 degrees and we haven't even made it to uh, 10 kilometers yet. And if we try and pull ourselves up too far, then we stretch ourselves too far away from the prograde marker and aerodynamic forces take over and we end up losing control of the vehicle. This uh, this vehicle just simply will not work at all. It's basically impossible to get work. So I recommend uh, if you have the Making History expansion and you get beyond the first couple of uh, rockets that you start using the mercury capsule until you can unlock some uh, fairings to hide away and make your rockets much more aerodynamic. So in order to show you basically what this looks like in a science mode playthrough, I've opened up a new science mode game. Uh, this is uh, the vehicle assembly building and these are the parts that you will see right away. I'm going to build uh, the first version of the Mark 1 rocket uh, using my Vostok capsule. That way I can bring my crew back safely. Attaching our uh, scientific experiments, our parachute, and uh, then attaching our solid rocket motors and really just finishing the construction of the rocket we prepare ourselves for launch and I like to add a scientist into the command module for these rockets for the first couple of rockets in order to maximize the amount of science because a, a scientist is able to uh, redeploy, re, re, refit the experiment modules here I am just uh, adjusting the uh, thrust here to once again maximize the amount of burn time that I have to get it a little higher, uh, but to also make it so that way uh, the amount of g-forces acting on my crew are minimal. Uh, once again we're going to nickname it the Mark I rocket and take ourselves out to the launch pad.
All right, moving into the research and development uh, facility, we uh, start gathering up some of the scientific uh, equipment we need for our next rocket. Uh, uh, something that you noticed is uh, in order to gather scientific data from the crew report multiple times, I had to step out of the vehicle and collect it with an EVA Kerbal. That's just right-clicking on the, on the command module and immediately and collecting all that data from it uh, using a collect data button. Uh, building up uh, the Mark II rocket, we're getting ready to take it out uh, once again out to the pad this time, bringing Jebediah Kerbin with us. Now that we've uh, finished with our first, uh, what I would call, suborbital flight, although we didn't really get suborbital because we didn't break out of the atmosphere, we now have enough data to unlock the level three section of the science tree, and we will begin uh, the construction of our first orbital class rocket, the Mark III rocket. Building basically the same uh, rocket that we built with the Mark III, we're going to have the ablator with uh, 20 units of ablative material. The uh, pressure sensor, the thermometer, and the mystery goo experiment, parachute, decoupler, and uh, the two-stage rocket that we had used previously to get ourselves into orbit.
And finally, with all that data we've gathered from uh, orbital flight around Kerbin, we move ourselves into the uh, R&D facility where we are going to unlock the parts needed for, a for uh, atmospheric flights around Kerbin using aircraft. For the next episode, we're going to be uh, learning about the basics design for aircraft and how, to, and how to fly them and their use in science and career mode. I want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all have an excellent day. Thank you very much for watching my video today. I hope I've helped you all out some in getting started with Kerbal Space Program. Next episode, we're going to be building aircraft and learning how to fly them. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or dislike it if you feel I need to make some improvements. Let me know down in the comments what I can do to make these vid videos be better. I'm always uh, working to improve them. If you enjoyed, if you, if you're enjoying this series so far and you want to see more, go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you'd like to support me, uh, go ahead and uh, you can uh, visit my Patreon down in the description below. I want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all have an excellent day.